Welcome everyone back to the Crimson 15 Podcast. I'm your host, Crimson Sin. Be sure to follow us over on Twitter, at C15 Podcast. Join the discussion over on Discord, link in the description below. And if you're enjoying the reviews and videos, be sure to sub, like, share, and hit that bell for notifications. Before I start the review, let's have a quick look at our sponsor for today's video. Does your story suck? Do you only have a few minutes of actual plot, character development, and drama to fill an entire episode? Do you want to tap into the vibrant and totally not toxic fandoms of Tumblr? Then you need Ship It Express. We can guarantee at least 20 minutes of pointless shipping so you don't need to waste your valuable time actually writing a story. We ship worldwide and in every situation, a thousand year old space Hitler and a teenage girl, we ship it. Giant scorpion woman and bratty cat girl, we ship it. A bland main character with no personality and a hulking beast of a monster that you wouldn't know was female except for the voice, of course we ship it. Why have talent when you can just ship it? Ship It Express, not just for terrible fan fiction anymore. Not available to actual writers with talent, vision, or self-respect. So yeah, that pretty much sums up the last three episodes, and this one isn't any better. It is about maybe three to five minutes of actual story, some cool stuff, and then just ship bait. My god, there's so much ship bait. And this one's all Catra and freaking Scissor Punch, Scorpia herself. It's ridiculous. Uh, these three, these first three episodes are so disappointing. I knew it was only going to be six. So I thought, okay, they're going to get a lot of things going, a lot of uh, information and lore. They, they gave us just maybe not even an episode's worth of lore. Gallons and gallons and tons and tons of shipping and weird pairings, Hordak and Entrapta. And blah. This one opens up with, you know, we finally, we get back to Catcher because we had no Catcher in the last episode. So this is her being, you know, basically sent to her death, but... They're in the Crimson Waste, and of course, you can't ever go anywhere without Scorpia, and Scorpia has to be an idiot and grab all over her and touch her, and remember, guys, if if you like somebody and they're like your friend, just keep throwing yourself at them, keep grabbing them and holding them, and you know, that that's going to work out because that's what you should do, but you know, Catcher's kind of pushing her off, and just, we get whiny, crybaby, bitchy Catcher this whole entire episode. Uh, I, I'm going to be sent out here to die, just leave me alone, uh, and being mean and dumb. This is so ridiculous. The Crimson Waste, it's a pretty huge place. I would imagine it's like the Mojave Desert. It's just huge. They just so happen to wander to the same exact bar that was in the middle of effing nowhere. But what are the chances? It would have they don't have a vehicle. They don't just like how Adora, they didn't bring anything with them. I can understand Catcher not having anything because Hordak basically just sent there to die. Why didn't Catcher bring something? They have those little sand rider, you know, skiff thingies. Nothing. They just or dropped off, they would just started walking from the fright zone, whatever. But they're they're at that bar, and it couldn't be any more convenient. And this whole next scene, I already kind of reviewed it because it was the clip that was uh, shown a couple days ago. And there's another clip that they showed where she was fighting Tongue Lasher, and that was it's the same episode. So it goes to show you how fast everything is going. That those two long clips came from this one episode. So they walk in the bar and. They did the same thing that Adora and Bo did. Oh, this place is supposed to be a, uh, deserted, but it's like filled with people. So I guess all the intel was wrong or they haven't checked in a long time. Catcher still hates everything. She's making stupid faces. Meets that lizard dude that they were, uh, Adora and Bo were having trouble with last time. And she's like, I want that chair. Get out of my way. And the guy kind of sneers at her and then she does her little cat scare, you know, sneer. And of course he gets scared and runs away. Catcher is not very intimidating. If Scorpia said, hey, buddy, that's my seat. You're like, oh, crap, this lady could you know, rip my arms off. Why is Catcher scary? She's the, who is this uh, this disgruntled little child here? It's It makes no sense that people are scared of her. And, we, and then we get right into the clip where she's like, oh, what are they going to do to me? Send me to die in the Crimson Waste? Well, I'm already here. And Goat Girl and Blizzard Boy, who who's not a boy, it's a girl, which is ridiculous. You can't even tell. And she's, oh, that she and her... Friends, I, if we ever see him again, I'll give him the what's what. Catcher overhears this, and <laughs> how convenient. Of course, Catcher is absolutely obsessed with everything Adora does, so she's going to try to find out where she is. She starts getting, instead of like asking for the information, she's just like, hey, you talked about that, that girl with the sword and that bow with that boy with the bow. But the funny thing is, someone mentioned this in my uh, comments on the last video when I did the this clip. She never mentioned the boy had a bow. So what what are you talking about? Like she never said that. She know it, it's. I think there was just like a mix up in the dialogue there. But of course she's like, I ain't telling you nothing. And of course Catcher just has to be cold. She's being bitchy, and all her. Di- she became the worst character. I can't believe it. 
best first place to absolutely last place. She was hit with the blue turtle shell of stupidity, and she's absolutely the worst character in the show now. Uh, Scorpia actually, you know, being kind of smart, pulls her aside. She's like, hey, uh, I don't think we should be causing trouble right now. You know, we're, we're here. We just found out there's people here. Let's, you know, try to blend in a little more. <sighs> Catra, oh, you think it's tough out here? Well, oh, I've had a bad life. And since I had a bad life, I could teach, you know, do whatever the hell I wanted. This is awful, awful, awful for people to think this way. It would be nice if she got her comeuppance. It would be nice if it got her in trouble. If it, her big mouth caused big problems. No, it solves all her problems. She's being brash and loud, pulls a knife off this one guy, jumps up on the counter, demands information, and it all works out for the better. <laughs> you gotta be effing kidding me. It's it's insufferable to watch because you're just... No, who's rooting for Catra? Does anyone like Catra this way? Does anyone like people in their life that are like this? No, everyone hates this type of person. And she always has this smile on her face like she's just a... The, you know, she's the baddest bitch in the Badlands. I hate this cocky freaking character. Uh, uh, Scorpia stings the, the the other. It's a lady. I keep saying uh, lizard boy, but it's a woman. And, you know, knocks her out. And then scary catch her face. Oh, go ladies. Scared out of her wits. Oh, we'll do whatever you say, boss. Oh, please, God, don't hurt me. This lady was running in the gang with Huntara, who's a million times more uh, scary than Catra. This lady's just a pushover. My goodness. And she stole that dude's knife and she's not giving it back. We get back to the, the three dum-dums in Huntara. They're at Mara's ship, which is kind of cool. I like that idea. Oh, cool. It's like her spaceship. They're going to find all this information. Even Bo's like, oh, it's going to be so wonderful. They get in there and it's already been raided. That thing's been there for hundreds of years. How long has that been there? Has it been thousands? How old is Hordak? My goodness. Everything's been stripped clean. It's just like an empty metal room. Adora's like, well, there's got to be something more here. We didn't come all this way for nothing. And... <laughs> it's uh she starts seeing some writing on the floor and then she knows it means to activate her shield and the shield opens the door what like the sh they show later on that the sword itself is like a key but why the shield like that's so ridiculous it opens up another chamber because the ship's humongous but that little room was just it the chamber opens up and then a bunch of bats come flying out everyone's scared but adore because she's a she's determined she's a badass get back to catch her and her new gang she stole that other guy's jacket uh, I guess his tongue lasher's little uh, snake thing, but I, I thought, as soon as I saw it, I thought, oh, she's, she's a tunnel snake now. Tunnel snakes rule. <laughs> They're just walking, and Catra's just like, you know, talking crap, and this is so easy. I love being out here. It's so wonderful. And they're just like uh, screwing with those two people, the lizard lady. You can, It looks like she has a boob, but I, I guess. They knock her into one of those plants that freezes you? How does that work? Why that works? How it doesn't instantly kill you? I can't understand if it paralyzed you, but it like freezes you. Weird. And uh, Scorpio's like, oh, I'm sorry. Can you go pick her up and, uh, you know, make sure she's okay? And Catcher's like, you don't ask her. You just tell her. She gets all up in Goat Lady's face and, hey, go do that. Um, Catcher loves being a mean, nasty bitch. Like, she just absolutely loves it. This isn't, uh, this isn't, doesn't make someone like you. Uh, Scorpia just like goes along with it, but I can't imagine Scorpia likes this. I know she wants her to be happy, but only time that she's happy when she's causing pain and misery. Do you really like that, Scorpia? Is that who you want? That's not who you see in Catra? I, I can't believe this. Then we get this, they got a dump on Kyle. It's... <laughs> she like looks at the goat lady. I don't know what her real name is, but she's like, your name's Kyle now. And she's like, what? Excuse me? Your name's Kyle. Like she does like a really cartoony face and they all laugh about it. That, that <laughs> They're going to dump on Kyle when he's not even there. And <laughs> what what's the deal with, with Kyle that they hate him so much? They absolutely can't stand him. And he just tries his best. He's a weakling, but he's not doing things wrong on purpose. But even Scorpio laughs it up. So... This, the, the shipping, ship, uh, shipping express, here it comes. Adora being a Sundari can't really tell Scorpia she's doing a good job or she likes her, but she's like, oh, we make a, we kind of make a good team. And she makes an anime face. Look at this wonderful face. This is perfectly fine for Wee Bear Bears and little silly cartoons. This is supposed to be serious, dramatic action. And this little anime face, just, it's ridiculous. It, it's absolutely unnecessary ah they keep walking they see some quicksand and you know they, they dodge it they keep showing the quicksand all the time because you know it's going to come into play then 
they're, which was kind of cool, but it's also a little dangerous. The goat lady was leading them into a trap, leading them to Tongue Lasher, so I guess they could be saved or whatever. And even Catcher kind of picks up on it. I guess she uses her uh, cat ears to hear, and she's like, hey, what did you what did you bring us? You brought us into a trap because then they're like surrounded by a bunch of dudes. And we see Tongue Lasher, and like I said in that clip, he looks pretty cool, kind of uh, plain, but at least he's like big and muscly and like masculine. He's the most masculine character we've seen who wasn't a woman. Get back to Adora and this little gag where they're like, don't open the door yet. I'm going to do it on three. One, two, three. And then Bo and Glimmer are like screaming for their lives. Guys, calm the F down. I, I guess this is the uh, pilot's room or is it the, for the forward of the ship because there's like the captain's chair. Bo sits down, tries to activate it and we get a hologram of... Mara when she, her version of She-Ra and it's like a woman because she has a woman's figure looks like a woman I want to see this She-Ra she actually looks kind of cool but it's like on repeat and you know just like Light Hope Adora tries to talk to it and ask it questions but it just keeps repeating itself and then Dora kind of has a mental breakdown she starts like uncontrollably laughing and <laughs> of course it'd be a loop <laughs> my life sucks everything's terrible just like how Catra had a breakdown and later in the episode, she has a complete meltdown. What? What is this? Why? Why not be upset? You know, things aren't working out. But then the whole laughing—it's just—it's just a crazy person thing. She can't stand it. She's getting all pissed off. She punches one of the computers, and then it shows like the hologram of the sword, like shoved in there. Remember, guys, you see a hole, just jam stuff in there. It always works out. And apparently, the sword is a key, and it like activates the whole bridge. And we get what Mara looks like. And she's cute as hell. She's all beat up and tired right here. But I like her design. She kind of has like that, um, I want to say like genie look to her. We were talking about this on our Discord. And when I saw this, I'm like, oh, she looks just like uh, Rouge from freaking Power Stone. Anyone remember that game? I'll roll in a picture. Kind of the same. Like they have very similar styles. But we get to see Mara speaking in. She looks like she's been through some stuff. A big battle some type of a war because she's all like kind of jacked up and she's talking. If you can hear me now, that must mean you're the new She-Ra. And you know, all this is very surprising to Adora to see like there was someone else who had this burden that I do that has the responsibility that I do. This is the good stuff in the episode. It's not particularly uh, original, but at least it's nice to see some of the past. And then you can see the desperation in Mara's eyes and she's just saying, you know, everything didn't work out the way I wanted it to. We get back to the, the Tongue Lasher fight. I already covered this, but I'll kind of speed through it again. Check out that video and you'll get more of a breakdown there. Catcher's making fun of his name. Even though her name is Catcher and she's a cat, she's going to make fun of this guy's name. Whatever. And it's that it's that arrogant... <laughs> Shut the hell up. Someone just punched this girl in the face. Ooh, I'm Tongue Lasher. Are you serious? And like, this is all the things that she's done. And acting like an idiot and thinking you're better than everyone. Tongue Lasher gets all irritated. They start the fight. And remember in the last episode, we had a kind of a... It's not wasn't a great fight with uh, Huntara and Adora, but it was good. This fight is lame as hell because nothing happens. Uh, he's whipping around. Catra just dodges everything. Scorpio tries to help, but they kind of like pin her. They don't pin her down, but they kind of get in her way because it's going to be a fight between Tongue Lasher and Catra, which is the way it should be. They're kind of challenging each other for leadership. The dodging continues. There was a point in the fight where I thought, well, that's actually pretty cool that Catra actually looked a little scared, a little concerned. She didn't say anything, but you can kind of see it in her face like, okay, this is a real fight. This guy actually knows what he's doing. This isn't some pushover like the goat lady and freaking lizard girl. But uh, she's, so, she's trying to like get out her little bone knife that doesn't even look sharp, so it's no better than a stick. Tongue Lasher gets her tied up, and I said this last time, would it have been just wonderful if he started just pounding her? Hitting her, swinging around, smashing under the rocks. You know, show Catra get hurt a little bit in this in her fights. Her have to struggle a little bit. Nope, she she uh, he holds her upside down and just I'm gonna talk crap to you. Uh, we get pocket pocket sand. Pocket sand. <laughs> Pushes him back. She kicks him in the face. He gets all angry. Calls her a cheater. But this is a street fight. There's no rules. He just runs at her. And another person brought this up in the, in my comments. He has a whip, which is like a long, immediate to long range weapon. He just bum brushes her and falls in the quicksand. What an idiot. They just needed some way for Catcher to win without having to like really fight the guy. He falls in. Oh no, I'm dying. And Catcher fakes helping and just takes the whip from him. But what did he do? Just let go? 
Like, why would he do that? Why wouldn't he, like, wrap it around his fist and, like, help pull him out? But she just pulls it away from him because apparently Catra's strong, physically stronger than this guy. And she leaves him to die. I hope he's dead. I, I want someone to die in this damn show for once. Catra does the whole, who's the strongest now? And everyone, uh, Scorpius starts to chat, Catra, Catra. Then everyone starts, like, chanting her name. And uh, this, this shipping stuff is ridiculous. She sees his old jacket and gives it to... Scorpio, because it's a big jack, because that guy was a big guy. So that was the only reason for the the animators to make that guy big, is so Scorpio could have his jacket. How stupid is that? She throws it to her, then kind of gives you that, like, hey, girl, this is for you. I get my girl the best stuff. <laughs> okay, she, I guess, whatever. We get back to uh, the three dum-dums and Huntara. They're talking to Mara, and she's giving a lot of information, but you can tell this is like a stressful situation. A lot of the stuff isn't making a lot of sense. We don't have full context. She even said stuff about like, Light Hope was making a weapon, but it like, it, the, the transmission was all gargled, so they don't get exactly what she said, so. Light Hope used the can't weapon, the weapon, weapon. What weapon? Light Hope's a bad guy? Or just, a, um, I'm trying to think. Since she's a computer, she can't be evil, but she has no value. Like, oh, I would sacrifice 500,000 people to save a million because that makes sense, right? She's not going to even try to save this. Like, she's a computer. She's going to do the calculated risk. So she probably was trying to make some weapon that was going to destroy Hordak, but it was probably going to be killing a lot of people. And I guess all this is going to play into why Mara did what she had to do. She gets a little whiny. I didn't even chose to be a hero. I give her a pass because this is like her final transmission. For as far as we know, she's dead after this transmission. She even talks about... uh. The way she talks about the portal, not as much as it being a mode of transportation, but it sounds like she's talking about a, a pocket dimension. Because it's like, oh, we can hide out here. Like this dimension is one separated from where they came from, which would be Eternia, but they never say it, which I don't think they're allowed to say it. So I'm wondering, if this, is this a multiverse thing? I opened a portal to a completely empty dimension and pulled Etheria in. I hid us from the rest of the universe. To keep everyone safe. That would be so ridiculous if that's, you know, don't do the end game thing. That Just let it be a, a mode of transportation. But the way she was talking, I'm thinking that this is a, a portal to other realities, other actual dimensions. Uh, maybe that means the other real she the original she still happened and this is just a alternate dimension and the other one was still awesome. Apparently, Catra's gang knew where to go. They knew where the ship was and they knew that Adora and her friends were there. How did they know this? I don't get it. Maybe the goat lady told them, but they never told her that where they were going. So why did they show up here? This is so convenient. It's beyond stupid. There should have been a scene where Catra's like, hey, I'm looking for this Antara chick. And she's traveling with three young uh, teenagers. One's blonde. She gives them information and they'd be like a scout. Oh, I saw them heading towards the center, towards that old ship. Oh, we're going to we're going to go after him. That's a five second scene that would explain why they know where to go. They poison dart everybody. They even hit a Huntara twice, but she can like fight through it, which is pretty badass of her. Scorpio grabs a door and scissors her hands off. No, she should have done that. That'd have been great. They steal the sword from her because she's not quick enough to say her magic spell. And we got, well, the, the good guys are screwed. They're all pet knocked out. Adora doesn't have the sword. But I guess uh, Huntara has enough strength to fight through the poison. She fought She fought the taser, picks up Glimmer and Bone, books it, and leaves Adora behind. And of course, Catra couldn't be any happier to have Adora behind because that's her lady. We cut to a celebration party scene. And Catra, that, that, this is a kid's show. We gotta, we gotta fix this. Okay, that's better, right? Could she possibly be holding her sword in a more suggestive manner? So this is a big party and everyone's like, three cheers for our new leader, Catra. I'm thinking to myself, all this happened like in, in, in real time in the show, 12 hours, uh, maybe a little more than half a day. They wandered into the desert, found the bar, found uh, where Adora was going, fought Tongue Lasher, took over his whole entire band and had a party. If this show, if this season didn't have his foot on the gas pedal, it just hit the nitro boost and it's just flying. This should have been three, four episodes of Catra joining the gang kind of finding a way to the top, challenging the boss, taking over the group, finding out where Dora's is going. This should have been able to breathe and grow, but instead it just happens in hyperspeed. Absolutely ridiculous. But they start the whole chant, oh, Catra's the best, Catra's the best. And in a sign of like, I don't know, niceness, 
Catcher's like, oh, three chance for Scorpia. And then Scorpia gets all, oh, gosh, like, like goofy. And look at this nice smile on Catcher's face. That's like the nicest she's ever looked. And then Catcher like pulls Scorpia aside and like grabs her, her claws. She doesn't have hands. And like pulls her into another room. It's like, oh, man, the, the shipping, it's uh, shiptastic. It's shipperific. Of course, uh, Scorpia loves this because it's like, oh, we, we're, we're, we're being close friends now. They start talking and... It's so weird that Catcher starts talking about going back to the Horde. Oh, I got the sword, and I'm bringing this back to Hordak, and we can, you know, do all the stuff, and we're gonna, she, he's gonna value me. <sighs> Didn't they already have the sword once? Didn't literally Shadow Weaver have the effing sword in season one? And they did nothing with it. She didn't even lock it away. She just, like, left it out. So, the importance of the sword apparently is was it known to anyone but now it is even though they still have the she has no idea what this thing is i know like adora she knows it's for her to turn to shira but she has no idea what exactly it is so we have this weird situation where adora's still trying to like impress hordak even though after you talked all that mad crap to him about how he's the one who's worthless and everything why do you want to go back and even Scorpio even talks about it. She's like, why do you want to go back? Didn't you hate being there? And then even Gadget was like, oh, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. She's like, stay here with me. We can roll over the, the, these gangs up in the Crimson Waste. Me and you can be one and two. I, I, You can be the leader. I can be your number one lady. And we can be happy. This is the only time I've ever seen you smile and laugh and look like you're having a good time. Let's just continue to have a happy life. But, of course, Catcher's always feeling that she has to prove herself and that she kind of leaves Scorpio behind. And, you know, how many times has this girl got to break your heart, girl? Get over it. So I got to check on the prisoner, which is Adora. We kind of get this this weird lizard. I'm assuming this is a woman because it's wearing like thigh-high boots and everything. Oh, kind of an odd clothing choice. But uh, Catcher's kind of giving like a weird interrogation, but it's more of a, a crap-talking session. Adora is trying to tell her, hey, Hordak's trying to build these these portals. He's going to bring over a bigger army. And even Catch like, what are you talking about? She's like, yeah, he has this huge army. He's going to bring it over. He's going to kill everyone. He's like, that's good. We want the army. but That means we win, you lose. But I'm, Adora's like, no, everyone's going to lose. Once once Hordak brings his you know powerful ships over, he may or may not just kill everyone on the planet because then he'll be with all his brothers, all his clones. So you wouldn't need uh, Scorpia, Catra, any of those people. She's like, I, we know all his plans. And she's like, how do you know that? And she's like, well, Shadow Weaver told me. And that's the trigger. If there ever was a trigger word for Catcher, it's Shadow Weaver. She's like, how do you know? What do you mean you know she told you? Uh, she like came to my house and like wanted to tell me everything. Catcher, this is a uh, Catcher's snap. She, she, she abandoned me to go be with you? Well, yeah, because she likes Adora. She doesn't like you. And she's like, Catra, we got we gotta, we gotta, we gotta fight this. Everyone's gonna get killed. But Catra's checked out. She is completely, you know, her eyes are wide open and there's a whole party going on next door and she can't hear anything. She's, uh, you're never too young to have a Vietnam flashback, but... Hey, <laughs> She's the thousand, the, the thousand mile stare and to the point to where she almost walks into, uh, Scorpia's weird boob and she's like, whoa, what's going on, Catcher? You almost like walked right into me. What's going on? You, you don't look so, you don't look so hot. And she's like, what's wrong? There's, there's something wrong with you. She can see there's literally like tears in her eyes. So all that bravado about, I don't care about anybody. Everyone sucks balls. I'm the coolest person on the planet. She's still crying like a little bitch because she does care. I All that false bravado, I knew it was just a sham. It was just a mask. You're still that scared little girl that you always were. Ha ha ha, in your face, Catra. Then she looks at Scorpion and says, we're going back to the past. No, we're going back and with tears in her eyes. So she's going to... I don't know, give Hordak what he wants so he can kill everybody. And she may or may not care if she gets killed in the process. So that's the end of this episode. Uh, like I said, uh, all the weird shipping, uh, the stupid fight scene, it wasn't all that great. Uh, all the bar scene was terrible. We learned a little bit about Mara. Mara looks cool. I like her. I want to watch her show. She seems like she has a, in that little moment where she was giving that message, she had more personality and more of a character than Adora has over three seasons. That's pathetic. But uh, yeah, this episode, every episode has had its moments, but it's mostly garbage with a little bit of, it's a garbage Sunday with actual real sprinkles. So there's a couple of parts that are edible. But uh, yeah, that wraps up episode three. We're halfway done. 
Turbo mode. I can't. I do not like this super fast season. It feels like we're missing things. There should be more story here. There should be more episodes. But when you're only got six, you know, six to go, you know, a whole season of six episodes, you can't do much with that. You you gave the writers an impossible task to tell an epic story in six episodes, with building characters and giving background stories. The Hordak uh, trying to develop Catra. You just can't do. It's just not possible. And you get this as an. This is your final result. But yeah, three more episodes to go. Thanks to everyone in the comments. Even the people disagree with me. I'm getting a lot of the kind of comments like, why do you why do you review the show? Because you hate it so much. I asked those people to watch my previous reviews, especially season one, episode 11, where I praised the ever-living hell of that episode. And you know what? Noel Stevenson wrote that episode. So it can be good. Things, this show has, the bones are good. They just, they never seem to get to greatness. So I review it because one, Everyone on Twitter was telling me I'm not allowed to watch this show because it's not for me. F you, I can do whatever I want. And two, I want to show you that it can be good. And all those 10 out of 10 reviews, perfect season three, that's a bunch of BS. This show has a lot of problems. It can be good. It has shown moments that it's actually been kind of excellent, but it just doesn't get there often enough. But uh, yeah, keep the comments coming. Tell me I'm an idiot. Tell me I'm completely wrong. You're free to have your opinion. I don't delete comments or anything like that. So uh, fire away. Let me know exactly how you feel. But uh, do it over on Twitter. Hit me up in the comment section here, even on our Discord server. There's tons of discussion going on over there. And there's even an email in the about page. So uh, keep watching, guys. We're halfway done. Three more to go. Tunnel snakes rule. Sand. Crimson Sand here. Thanks for watching the video. If you're enjoying the content, be sure to sub, like, share, and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss a single upload. If you have any tips or story ideas, hit us up on Twitter at C15Podcast, or better yet, join our Discord server. Link in the description below.